The last major bond for the Cresswell School District was passed in 2006 when we built Cresswell Middle School. Our other two schools have had additions, but for the most part, have not been updated. Crest Lane Elementary School was built in 1949, 75 years ago. And Crestwell High School was built in 1967, 56 years ago. In 2017, PAE Engineers and GLAS Architects conducted a district-wide facilities assessment. They identified approximately 50 areas where school facilities did not meet safety and security standards, current building codes, Americans Disability Act requirements, or had simply deteriorated over several decades due to reduced school funding and deferred maintenance. In 2019 and 2022, the district conducted community-wide needs assessments and strategic planning processes with input from students, staff, parents, business owners, and community members. In both strategic planning processes, the community identified the facilities as one of their major concerns. Some of the areas of concerns that were identified in the facilities assessment by the engineers and in the strategic planning processes by the community of our schools are, at Crest Lane Elementary School, the traffic flow in the parking lot creates safety issues for both vehicles and pedestrians. There aren't enough parking spaces to accommodate staff and visitors, and the asphalt surface is in need of repair. The breezeway and building roofs that connects the east and west sides of the building has wood rot and needs to be replaced. The siding also has structural damage and needs to be replaced as well. The newer east side needs exterior repairs for damaged siding, rotted posts and fascia, roofs replaced, and the building needs paint. The exterior doors are old and some are rotted and they do not meet security standards. The playground cover has rotted posts and needs repairs and painting. The west side of the school has asbestos in the halls and classroom floors and in old unusable steam heaters that needs to be abated and replaced. The electrical panels are exposed and within reach of students and electrical and HVAC systems are old and outdated. At Cresswell Middle School, there is a large area that was originally a void in the construction of the building plan and was modified for future classroom use. By finishing the room with electrical wiring, an HVAC system, interior walls, and a ceiling, it would be made functional for student use. The air circulation in the building needs to be increased and there is no air conditioning and many of the classrooms are hot and uncomfortable during warm weather months. There are no lights in the PE athletic field and adding lights would allow for student and community sports activities in the evenings. At Cresswell High School, the roofs of the buildings have been repaired to the point that they are beyond repair and need to be replaced. The HVAC system needs to be updated for increased heat and air circulation. The exterior of the buildings has wood rot in the foundation trim, support posts, and the eaves. The electrical systems are old and outdated, and electrical panels are exposed and located next to plumbing and drinking fountains, and the restrooms do not meet the American Disabilities Act requirements. There is asbestos in the floors of the halls and classrooms that need to be abated and replaced. Some of the classroom spaces are too small for the number of students they serve, and most do not have windows for natural light. The exterior wood doors around the perimeter of the building are rotted and do not meet security standards. The CTE building is deteriorating. The facility is below safety standards and does not meet building codes for the American Disabilities Act requirements for restrooms and the stairwell that accesses the classrooms at, on the second story. The welding and construction shops share a space and lack room to expand their programs. The infrastructure and roof of the agriculture building are deteriorating and at the end of their lifespans. The exterior of the rear of the school building is rotted and giving way to the elements. The commons can accommodate approximately 200 students comfortably, but we are currently at 400 students and projected to increase enrollment over the next few years. The activity fields are 56 years old and they are not safe and appropriate for physical education classes or athletics. The football field no longer has a crown 
and has sinkholes throughout. It is known across the league and by OSAA officials for being an unsafe field. The baseball and softball fields are suffering from their age and the same hazards of sinkholes and declining landscapes around the perimeter of the fields. The track surface has one to four inch deep sinkholes and one to two foot areas where the track has deteriorated and split at the surface. The proposed bond is $18,210,000 and is commonly referred to as a continuation bond. The district would also receive a $4 million state matching grant if the bond passes. This would give the district a total of $22,210,000 to use for facilities projects if the bond passes. We would receive the $4 million state matching grant only if this bond measure does pass. If the bond measure passes, the bond tax rate will remain at the current level of $1.94 for $1,000 of assessed value because an existing bond would retire in 2027. With these funds, we would be able to repair and update schools. This would include roofs, electrical systems, plumbing, HVAC systems, kitchens, flooring, exterior walls, mold and asbestos abatement, parking lots and improvements to physical education, sports facilities, we would be able to improve the learning environment by modernizing classrooms where needed, adding air conditioning, and renovating unfinished classroom space. We could increase safety and security by adding secured entry points, revamping security cameras, parking lot entry and exit ways to improve traffic flow, installing an emergency generator, and establishing a, an emergency reunification center at Crestwell High School. We would increase access to vocational training, including adding career and technical education classrooms for vocational trades to teach 21st century career skills. And we could establish a school-based health center in the current district office space and relocate the district office. Please take time to learn what this bond measure would do and how it would impact our students. Most important, please take time to turn in your ballot on or before May 16th. Thank you.